And as I say, I'll take good care of it and get it back to Well, I, I know you will, and I've loaned it so many. And <laughs> another thing that I had that I don't have anymore, it's a 1910 city edition of the Sanford Herald. Now, there's a boy over in Longwood. I was in hopes he'd be here this afternoon, but he and his mom are leaving by truck to Kentucky tomorrow oh, oh. <laughs> to, to get some antiques. They're going antique crazy. But anyway, uh, it's all to pieces because all through the years I've loaned it to the high school and this, that, and the other, and it's in rags. But he takes his own pictures and everything. But uh, now Carol Stone, I don't know whether you know her or not, yes. she has the same thing and she had her pages laminated. Good. And I, I wish you could ask her to let you see that. All right, I will. And I was out at the Galicians Saturday afternoon at their 60th wedding anniversary. And uh, I sat there and listened to everybody talk. Everybody was married, everybody was this and everybody was that. And pretty soon I said, now you all had your say, let me, let me give you my say. I said, I'm not married. I've lived in Sanford longer than any of you. I've known the Galicians longer than any of the rest of you here. Well, then they started questioning me as to my age and this, that, and I told them. So young man, this is, um, oh, I can't think of their name. I do. Uh, Julia Lang, she used to be uh, steel, she is, it's her daughter and husband, they live out there in Sherman. And next thing I do, he was kneeling, kneeling down beside me and he said, I've got something I want you to see and I'll bring it to you. Well, he's got the 1908 copy. Aww. And I did see that in an antique shop and started to buy it because the two copies are very close together and Mr. E.T. Woodley did that. and so. But, well, now when when did the Herald start? When was that first? I don't know when the Herald first started, but they don't have copies of this down in the really? office. Really? No. Looks like they'd be trying to find those, don't they? But because uh, I I had the uh, minister that we had at First Baptist Church when he retired. He gave me a job, and he helped me with it a whole lot, just to try to get as many former ministers of the church. So a friend of mine, Mrs. Dabb, and I. I said, well, let's go down to the board of the L office and see what we can find. And we went down there, but they didn't have any pictures. They used to read the papers. Now we read the pictures. Right. Right. So, but I got information, a lot of information about the church and this, that, and other than from that. But uh, then I went over to Vincent's fish place. I thought, well, he'd, ha he'd have something. He had that 1910 copy, and it had one of the preachers in it. And I said, Bill, how about let me have that and take it and get the picture made? How much do you pay that? We vote for that. Well, my son can do it just as well as I can. I said, well, all right, let him do it. But he wasn't going to let me take that thing out of the yeah. fish market. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're both raised here. But anyway, you, you were born here? Yeah, it's Fox. I didn't realize that. I was born down on Oak Avenue where the sisters live now, the Catholic sisters. Oh, yes. That's my boarding place. <laughs> Except it looks look like this one up on the wall here. The top one is my house. Mm -hmm. The church that, yes. that I was baptized in, then the house where I was born. What church is that? First Baptist. It's the first church that's built here. And then that other house below there is my grandfather's house, known as the Woodruff's house. Woodruff's? Woodruff, but it, they're the ones that his grandfather built it. Mm -hmm. My grandfather bought it built. When, when was that built? What year? Do you know? Built before I got here. Don't ask me anything before 1892. <laughs> and three things, let's see, three things after 1892. I was born in 1892. I was baptized in 1900, and I graduated from high school in 1911, and I'm through. <laughs> I'm all through now <laughs> until I go to my underground condominium, uh. which I already have and got it marked. <laughs> so what, what do you? What are some of your earliest memories of Sanford as a child? Well, we had dirt streets and shell sidewalks and little bridges that we walked across to get to the other side of the street. 
What kind of little bridges? Little wooden bridges. Really? That Were they high? Or? No, they were level with the sidewalk. We'll take it this way. The street's going this way. Well, we want we want to come over here. We walk across a little bridge to get over on the other side of the street and cross a little bridge to get on the sidewalk over there. And there was four bridges on every every corner. Which corners were they, do you remember? Well, on, on the avenues and streets. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sort of like they would be in the place of crosswalks are now in, yeah. in roads. You just walk them, and then on Halloween we turned all the bridges upside down. Oh well, <laughs> that sounds like fun. And took the gates off of everybody's <laughs> gate. On the were they, were there a lot of fences? Oh yes, I everybody think. had a everybody fence. Everybody did. I think the fence is around my house. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. I can see it from here. And uh, then we had we had these little ditches. Uh, my house, our house faced faced east. We had a ditch across the front, we had a ditch that went this way, and it went back to the big ditch. We carried it on down to the lake. I see. Everything well, drained to the lake then? Drained to the lake, and all the little critters sat on the ditch. Yeah. Then we had the scavenger wagon. What was that? That came along with the clean buckets, and they took nice. the old buckets out. <laughs> We could hear them rattling when they came, and that was quite an event. But then we started to grow. I lived down where I was born until I was 43. And my brother and I, all my people had, my father and mother had died, and my other two brothers had married. Then one brother had passed away before we left there. And uh, Then that's when we had brick roads and things started growing again. Let me go back to your little bridges over the roads. Because they were there, then you couldn't use horses and buggies there. Was that it? Oh, you could turn a corner. I see. On, and we had hitching posts at every place. And uh, no, they they were from the sidewalk just across this little ditch. I see. The I, I misunderstood the you then. Right. The uh -huh. road was still clear. Yeah, yeah yes. the road was still uh -huh. clear. And of course, I lived right next door to the Catholic Church all those years. Catholic Church has always been in that one spot. Then. Yes, it's the uh, original church burned 48 years ago. We were still living at home then. Mm -hmm. and what kind of fire department did you have? Volunteer? Yeah. Well, the first one we had down here, I say first for the first one, I remember. We did a few things before I got here, I <laughs> But it was down here on um, First Street where the bank has taken in all that territory. Because there was a hotel down there one time and the, and the bank grew wide, that's gone. But there was a, just like a big open shed and that had, that was a fire department. And, it was uh, drawn by horses then? I guess there were manpower. I don't yes. know what the little buckets were all hanging up there and the hats were there. Uh -huh. And uh, then we have this self the self well with the thing around it in the, at the bottom of Park Avenue and First Street. With that? A fountain. Where? Uh, would that be down? Well, right, now, of course, the lakefront wasn't that far down then, was it? No. It was no, up. No, this was on First Street. Not oh. First Street of today. Uh huh. Where the clock used to be. Oh, I, I see. Remember. Right, that, right. That's by. where the fountain was. What happened to those uh, fountains and wells when they paved over? Did they cap them off or what? Well, they could, yeah, they drained them off. Did they? And, uh, Were they artesian? Yeah. We all had wells. Well, of course, it was a long time before this was any town, part of the town. And they had the corporation ditch up here just off of 10th Street where the Mahoney House is and the Peabody House. It ran clean across the town. And then when they started farming, we all had a self well. Yeah. When they started farming, our wells all went down there. Oh, I see. So then we had, we put, for a while we had pumps on them. Mm -hmm. That was the only way we could get the yeah. water. And then they gave away completely. Uh, yeah. did, uh, where did, where did your uh, family come from when they came to San Well, the Start off with my father came from Florida, Orange County, New York. Hmm. And finally, he went. He went, went to Texas, and he didn't like it. But how in the heck he got over here? I don't <laughs> know. But he got over to here to Lake Jessup, and 
They rowed a boat over to White's Wharf, which is now Hiley's fish camp. And from there he walked to Lake Jessup. And speaking of Mabel Graham, I don't know who you know we're talking about. Yes, I know. Ms. Well, Graham. Papa was walking and he got to Tuscaloosa and he heard all this whispering going on. And he went to that house and it was Dr. Harris and all of the stories, uh -oh. Mabel's mother and all of them. Okay. So that's where he got acquainted. Then he went on. My mother, she was, uh, she came from Kentucky. And she was the oldest child. And that's her as a baby sitting up in that lap over there. And uh, grandfather, I was always sorry I couldn't be a territorial daughter. He came after it with me. But his brothers all came ahead of him. So then the rest of his children were born in Tallahassee. And that's where his wife died. Did he uh, meet his wife here at Sandford? Or? No, they were married in, in uh, Jefferson County. Being by myself, I don't mind it too much because I know something's around. <laughs> <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, he uh, then he he married again. Married. Um, um, Miss Lawton from Savannah, Georgia, and she raised all of his children. And they came to, to Lake Charm to live. And now that's where my father met my mother. He never got back to New York. <laughs> Sand in his shoes. Then. Yeah. He went one time back. But anyway, uh, then Ovita was named. I've got, I don't know whether you've seen that book of Ovita that Mr. Addy. No, ma'am, I haven't. Uh, that, that's it thing he, he did. I remember Just reading that. about it in the paper. I'd like to look Well, at I'll it. let you take it along oh, with it to nice. look at. Thank you. And uh, really, <laughs> the only, uh, in a way, it, it's, I think it's a very good book. He's done wrong with his picture, of course, that's me. <laughs> but in the back, you can read about people and then turn to the page and read about them. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one good thing about it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, they, they met over there, and that's where they were married. Mm -hmm. My mother and father. I have a picture of the little church they were, and they were married in. And uh, then when the big freeze came, they had the two boys. A, what would have been a sister had she lived? She died over there. Then, then they had two boys, my brother Gwen and my brother George, born there. My brother me and I were born in the same time. You, you say you lived in the one house for 40 some years. Yeah. Where did you move after that? We moved over on Myrtle Avenue in, in Noble Apartments. And uh, that, that name's familiar to me. Was there Dr. Noble? Dr. Noble, yes. yeah. And they had three houses over there on Myrtle Avenue. Ms. Noble lived in, because the doctor had died. Yes, the she, I knew her. And she, lived there. Yes. Mm -hmm. and she had those two two uh, nieces that lived here, and one is Ms. Russell that's still here. Mm -hmm. What did downtown look like? What were the boundaries of it? Was it just one street, or? Well, yes, it was just one street, and... Went, uh, that went, was... Went clean across town. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> we had the, see, the railroad was downtown there, too, and the freight depot was downtown, so we had more railroad traffic down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, how often did a train come in? Well, we we had about two trains or three trains a day, and then the Obita train went out from here. Oh, I didn't know there was an Obita train. Oh yes, if Carol Stone and I want to ride on that freight <laughs> train so bad we don't know what to do, and I asked the railroad man, and he asked him about it. Said, "Well, we have no insurance, so oh. for people to ride in, yeah. and, and the track is rough." But, and he was even going to come over to Oviedo and pick us up because oh. it's a freight train now. <laughs> We'd have to ride the caboose, but he was going to do it. I was going up here on Park Avenue and get on it, and she yeah. was going to get on it a little further out. Back of her house. Right back of her house. <laughs> they wouldn't let us do it. That's too bad. <laughs> and then, see, my father was with the Plancets and Railway. And the train's all back downtown from up here around Ninth Street. That's where 
the, what they call the Y, and where the trains fixed so they could back all the way into town. Oh, I see. And uh, we had a railroad hospital at that time. Really? Where was that? It was out here on Ninth Street. Hmm. Where that recreational thing is now. Yes. yes. Where they built the second railroad station for San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I think that's a West Side recreation. West Side. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, then, and the other attraction was the boats coming in. Do you, you remember the boats coming in, of oh, course? Oh, my Lord, yes. Yeah. How many uh, docks did they have? Just the one? They had the railroad dock in the Clyde Line. The railroad dock went right straight down the railroad track from, from where the train backed into down there on, by, by the Pico building, where the bank is now. And they made a big mistake when they moved all this to tear out a lovely little railroad station. At the I bank. remember that station, and it was lovely. Um, it was very attractive. And it, they, it could have made the best uh, could have been anything. Shop. Could have been a shop or a, it, just anything. Really a could have. place. It would be a good place for it because Mr. Plant did so much. Mm -hmm. And the boys that moved over into the hotel, they've done such a beautiful job of restoring that. And I will say the other building looks better, but uh, it's not the pretty brick. Mm -hmm. I took a young, this young boy from uh, Lake Mary, he's a historian for, for not Lake Mary, but Longwood. He's a historian for Lake for Longwood. And he's very much interested in all of this. He's written some stories about it over here. And uh, so I said, all right, Hal, let's go down and see if they'll let us go upstairs in the building. Well, they closed the front on the park on First Street. So we went down what used to be called Railroad Avenue. It's called North Oak Avenue now. So we went to the back steps and we went up. And uh, the front of it on First Street was the railroad offices for the, for the uh, plant system. And he was very anxious to see things. But when they made it into an apartment, they chopped the whole thing up to where you couldn't find anything. Oh, and of course, the uh, welfare has moved in. And we went sailing down the hall. And, woman came out and says, have you come to get food stamps? I said, no, I've come to renew my use. <laughs> but I couldn't, re we did the best we could with it. The big rotunda that we went into when we came up the front steps and then went into all these different rooms and down the hall to the north end, nothing but desks and all these offices. I don't know how many rooms we had to go through to get to where I wanted to go. And when we got there, it was a little tiny room where it used to be all across to the stairway, from the corner to the stairway. I see. And you, you said rotunda. What, what do you mean? I mean that you go into this great big hall. They call it a rotunda. Oh, I see. The hall was called it. And uh, it was, they divide, so, this is a picture that was taken in the This is the north end of the rotunda to the backdrop of the uh, Tampa Bay Hotel. Let's see. And those are the people that were in the Plant System Railway Office. Now, was this a photograph or was this painted on the no, wall? No, that was a drop curtain. It was a curtain that they painted uh -huh. that on. Because behind that was one of the big iron safes. <laughs> But there wasn't anything, it was just this great big place and here with all these rooms around it mm -hmm. that she went into. Mm -hmm. so, Do you know the names of these people? I know some of them. Helen, I haven't been able to get them. Well, that's Miss Kitty Pillsbury. She was the secretary. Now, I don't know this man or this man. That was my daddy. That was Mr. Elliot. And I don't know him. And that was a Mr. Whiteman. And we think this is Claire Kent's father because mm -hmm. he worked for the railroad. Now, some of these are... But, we don't know whether Mr. Swope's in that picture or not. Mm -hmm. They and not, hmm. we and didn't have it written on the back of the picture. Now the boy took that off from another picture that oh, I had. I see. Very good. So uh, do you know what year this was taken? No, I guess I was playing around with that. <laughs> see, my mother died when I was eleven, mm -hmm. and there was a colored woman that had lived with us two years before she died. 
And uh, most every afternoon when Papa came home, of course in those days you walked back and forth so that you didn't ride right. this way to her. And uh, he would take me down to watch the trains come in. I could, on the west side of the building, I could be that, and on the front side I could uh, be on First Street. And Mr. Hines' saloon was across the street, and I had such a good time watching people go in there. <laughs> What else was across the street? Well, there was a grocery store, and at one time that building was painted gray down there on the corner with the bank in there. And then Mr. Hines built all those buildings in between up to Mr. Hill's hardware store that has been pulled down. Right. You remember it wouldn't went yes. on the corner. And they made it all alive. But when Mr. Hines, he was a Saloon keeper. When he built that and he put a knot tool over the top in God We Trust. Uh, I tell you, everybody got mad about that. <laughs> Did he change it? It wasn't changed because it was all sold and the wooden building was torn down and the brick building put in there. And that was a theater down there for a while. What was the name of it? I think it was the Star Island. And, uh, but there's an auto supply thing in there, I think, and has been for some time. What was the name on the, of the bank on the corner? That was the National Bank until they got across the street. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what uh, other businesses do you remember downtown? Well, Woodruff and Watson had a the Watson two Watson men had a clothing store. Braxton Perkins had a place on that side of the street. And uh, I think it was Mr. D.A. Caldwell where the uh, Touchstone Drug Store is now because I got a doll that I got for Christmas. But before the bank was built, though, Mr. T.J. Miller had a store there, right on the corner where the bank is. I, see. You, I don't know whether you were. No, no I, I don't know. Well, that was a little wooden building, and he had everything from pianos to casket sale. <laughs> you'll see that in that. That's the reason why I want you to read that. That's what you'll see, how many different right. things that he had down there. Oh, that's fine. And uh, then, these, then finally the dime stores came in. And I don't know just when the drug store got on the corner there, but mm -hmm. I, I do know. And then people, well, no, on that corner after that, Mr. Forrest Lake had a bank there. And it got in the name of so Then across the street, where that, uh, that was the People's Bank, across the corner there. And then, the, now up in the Pico block, those other buildings had been torn down. And one to the east, as you go up the front stairs, that was Dr. Aldridge's. Uh, drugstore, and next to that, they've taken all the petitions out, so it's all one thing now. The Chase and Company's office. Oh, really? That's where they stop. Now, let me see if I can. This is way up. Is this near what I call the Romlet Building? No, that's that. That's it's on further, the other that's side. Further. This is. We'll call it the Willacca Building. Oh, yes, you know it yes, better I than know. that. Right. So there were stairs that you went up in the front. All right. So on the corner was M. Frank's clothing store. Then on the other side of it was Dr. Aldridge's drugstore, and the next to that was Chase and Company. Mm -hmm. Then there was another building that didn't belong to Pico. It was Mettinger's Dry Goods Store. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they Mettinger's the John Morgan grandparents. Yes, grandparents. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the post office, which later became Joe's Smokehouse. Uh, and Mr. McLaughlin, he used to be over on Park, but then he was moved in there. Then there was a drugstore on the corner. Mm -hmm. And before the drugstore, not in my time, there was a bank there. Mm -hmm. now, the drugstores just had drugs, but they didn't have food at that time. Everybody went home for lunch, didn't oh, they? Oh, yeah. Or just ate ice cream and drank something. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now that took care of that block, and then the next across the street was another wooden building that was L. Alfred's drugstore. And, and then next to that, 
Mrs. Allen had a pet shop. Let me ask you about the Willacca building again. Someone told me that that inner court was where they uh, had places for horses and carriages. Do you recall that? Or? The Willacca? Uh -huh. The one, well now maybe I'm, I'm mistaken by calling it that, the uh, one where the welfare is now. No, there never was any court in that. It wasn't? No. Well, I thought there was an archway. There was an archway that when the train came in with the mail, old man Muller, he back took his horse and his mule or whatever it was and wagon and backed it up to the train and maybe, then went through to, to, to the post office. Oh, <laughs> and his daughter was one of the, was the postmistress. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Whiteman, after the railroad folded up, this Mr. Whiteman, now where the priest lives now, Chase House, mm -hmm. people by the name of Whiteman built that. Oh, I see. And it's always known as a chase house. Yes, that's all and so, But uh, then he was postmaster for a while until they, they sold the house to Chase. And they lived over on Magnolia Avenue. Until he must have had a large family to have that large house, did he? Well, he had, no, he had Horace and Ernest and Marion and Harry. Hmm. But uh, Chase, added on to the house. Oh, Some upstairs yes. put in bathrooms and this, that, and the other, because they were all great big rooms with a beautiful house on the inside. Yeah. Always yeah. Um, Why did, uh, what happened to the trains? Was there just wasn't enough business here for them, or what? Well, no, they moved the station out to 9th Street. And they had the same number of trains that, well, we don't have as many trains now as we had then. Because then they finally, they, Coastline moved it out to where it is to keep from paying taxes. Oh, really? And I think they got caught up with it <laughs> after a while. I would that, that was, that was so. the main thing from 9th Street. <laughs> but 9th Street was rather congested for the trains to come in. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, that was the why, and the hospital was out there. But uh, of course, they had to move the main tracks over to where it is now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, was that the only thing out there other than the farms and the farm areas? at that time? Um, all farms and the people that lived on them and this, that, and the other. And both sides of our town were farms. Right, on Cellar Avenue. <clears throat> Cellar also. Avenue and on the west side. And uh, did First Street go all the way down to what is Mellonville now? Yeah, no, no, no. Not years ago it didn't. It was a brick building like Edith was saying. There was a brick building across there. And I don't know just when Edith came here because I don't really remember when they tore that thing down. But we had, no, that was farms on the other side where the hospital is now. Mr. Pace had his farm. All that section in there. And the water came almost up to First Street until they put in all this bulkhead building. Mm -hmm. When did they do that? Now, that's past 19 of that money. <laughs> okay. Dates are something I cannot remember. I, I can't even. <laughs> I just can't do it to save myself. The woman down at the Sanford Library, got, General Sanford Library, got mad at me because I couldn't tell her what year the Sanford house was torn down. I said, I don't know. I don't even think I remember when it was torn down. <laughs> it just disappeared. <laughs> and uh, But anyway, uh, no, I don't remember when that, but we had to go back up to uh, 2nd Street to go out on the east side of town. Mm -hmm. uh, was Sanford Avenue there then? Yeah, Sanford Avenue was there before 1st Street was. was it? And that went into the old Orlando Highway, didn't it? Mm-hmm. That's where we had to go out. We went out here on Park Avenue after we got it paved, and we turned to the left and went on over to Sanford Avenue, then went to Orlando. Because the Dowdenay House was in our way. That was the end of Park Avenue where yeah. the Dowdenay uh -huh. House was? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I've talked to Emma Spencer. She said that dairy was out there. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. Was it a large dairy? What did she say where, where the dairy was? She said it was uh, beyond, I think, where the Dowdenay House. Mm -hmm. But she talks about uh, taking the cows out to graze and everything yeah. out in that area. Well, there. Her people had a big house on 20th Street, and uh, I didn't know just where they're there, because they've been in dairy business ever since I've known them, but I couldn't keep up with them as to where they 
She, she knows more about that than I do. <laughs> when was the first street paved? Do you remember about the time, how old you were? Well, I guess First Street was paved first, and Oak Avenue still hasn't covered over the bricks that were, were, were put there. All the streets were brick then that they were uh -huh, doing? but they were all dirt roads. And uh, until they started paving, and then they paved up as far as uh, 10th Street, and then they came on out. You see the difference in the streets. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because that was the end of town. <laughs> But Do you remember the first car in Sanford? The first car? I think either Mr. Fernall had had it, because we used to pay a quarter to ride in it. Did you? Churches would make money. Go around the loop, come up here to 20th Street, and go down to Sanford Avenue and come around. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, a Mr. Johns that came to town, he had one. Now, uh, Blanche. Right, was her, his daughter, and so, uh, and she had a brother too, and Mr. John married Mrs. Mrs. Pace, that lived out on the east side of town. What about the street cars? Did they call them street cars? They just had one, just the one. Mm -hmm. Uh, and someone right. told me they were gasoline engines. And I guess they were. I don't know. They didn't, I really they didn't have wires over here. I don't know. But they, they went out to Cameron City. That was a. Well, how'd they turn around after they got out there? They just switched the thing, I guess. I, I don't know. Just like you. Like they do in San Francisco, everybody to get out. I don't know how, how you do that. <laughs> I went. We used to go out to. Uh, not all the way to Cameron City, but, but it was out here on 25th Street. There was a big old packing house out there, and we'd have parties out there, dances out there. Mm. And uh, we'd all go out. And one night coming back, a mule got on the truck. And they rang the bell and they rang the bell, but the mule didn't get any place, and finally the car hit him and cut him in two. Oh. <laughs> And uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Moy, her brother Frank, see, what was Frank Campbell? Frank Campbell. He was my boyfriend that night. And all of a sudden, he grabbed me. He said, "Martha, save me, save me, save me! Or how about you saving me?" <laughs> but Frank stuttered quite a good bit, and but he had the most beautiful voice when he sang. Oh, it was just beautiful. And so finally, when the war came, he was drafted. And he said, well, all in the world they'll want me for us to sing to him. And he said, I'll be killed first. One. And you know he was? Yes, he was. And that beautiful voice. Because he couldn't talk to anybody. He stuttered too bad. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they lived down on Oak Avenue, just the block north. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's... How, yeah. how much uh, did it cost to ride the streetcar? I don't know, because I didn't pay anything. <laughs> and they took us from, took us out there for nothing. <laughs> but it was just out through the celery center, celery part of it. Mm -hmm. And somebody, I believe in, in that thing that they wrote in Sanford, that it went all the way to Ovita, but I don't, I don't remember mm -hmm. anything about that. That train is going to go to Ovita. Um, what, let's see, hey, I'm running on this. Um, what did they do on holidays? What did they celebrate? So? I really couldn't tell you. People went on picnics and things like that. Boat rides, we did an awful lot of boat rides. Did you? And there was an old on Oak Avenue where I lived at the other end, because where Benjamin Whitney lives now, there was a small house there on that corner of Captain Talbot. He gave all of us kids the best time than anybody. He was a Confederate veteran. And uh, speaking of the saloon, I love to be down at the office on Saturdays. Dr. Delamata, who lived on the cross the railroad tracks on the west side, and Captain Tarver lived on Wick Avenue. They met at the corner of Hill Park District every Saturday. 
the boys went and took as much as they could carry to get home with. And I'd have more fun. And my mother was a WCTUR and this, that, and the other. And, uh, but uh, my grandmother was too, and she was coming up to see my mother. And uh, she came by, and Ms. Tarver, his wife, was out in the yard outlining the beds with bottles like they used to do, you know. And she stopped and talked to Miss Tarver and said, Miss Tarver, what are you doing? She said, well, you know, I thought it'd be awful nice to outline my flower beds with the captain's initials. And Mama looked down at her, Grandmother looked down at it. She said, well, do you see what you've got? S.O.T. She said, well, from here out, it's going to be O.S.T. Tarver, O.S.T. And then, that's all we ever know is Captain Tarver. I've got a picture of him and some of us children. Uh, did he uh, die here in San Francisco? Yes, he did. He died down in what well, the house has been torn down. He's buried out in Lakeview Cemetery. Uh, these two big houses down on Oak Avenue between 5th and 6th Street. Mm -hmm. Those are two that my grandfather built. Hmm. And uh, in the corner, one is where Captain Tarver and Mrs. Lee, Mrs. Mrs. Southwood's mother. I don't know if you know Miss Southwood or not. Yes. Well, her mother did that. And she kept the captain until he died. But she made the direct of the houses. Myra tore it down and I was very happy that she did really? because mm -hmm. it was awful. But the other one's still up there. How many Confederate uh, veterans do you know of that were in Sanford? Well, I don't know that I know of any, except Captain Tarver. Mm -hmm. Did he ever talk about any battles he was in or anything? No, he never did. He never burdened us with all of that. And uh, he had charge of all the, of the work on Pullman cars out of our railroad shops. Well, I thought Captain was in here, but I don't believe he is. I never know where I put them. <laughs> and I all think of us I had that problem. <laughs> Captain, where are you? Start at the back, you might be. <laughs> well, I'm kind of close. But anyway, he would rent. Now, he had no children, and his wife died, and she, she was a Jew, Jewish mm -hmm. woman. And he took her back to Savannah, Georgia. That's where he married her. And then he had no children, so he took on the on the children of Sanford. Nice. And he would rent these boats and take us for rides. And uh, they'd bring in these, uh, someone said they never heard of it, but to bring in these uh, bowling alleys in tents and set them up. Mm -hmm. you know. And he'd take us down and said, he'd come down here on the corner, we're going to go bowling this afternoon. Uh. <laughs> and it, we couldn't ask for anything any yeah. better than that. Yeah, right. that's nice. <laughs> oh, here he is, right here. Of course, I'll tell you, I don't know. <laughs> now, this was just us young children, and this one grown woman here, that's Edna Prince. So you'll see there's only one bunch of bananas. On his birthday, he had two, because they had the grown-ups and the children, too. And a long beard. Oh, yeah. And wore the, he wore the uniform, all the gray, all the Did time. Did he? Yes. Mm -hmm. T-A-R-V-E-R, -E uh -oh. celebrating Washington's birthday, mm -hmm. 1901. What uh, house is that? Do you know? Well, it's, it's over on the corner of 8th and, and Myrtle Avenue now. Mm -hmm. That's where the Whitman house is now. It was on that corner. Mm -hmm. Well, the Whitmers, between the Whitmers and the Doyle house, and now I have from the corner that sort of was on that. That was all Palmetto. The witnesses were going to build. So they bought the lot next and moved the house there. And they lived in that house until their house was built. And then the Mobleys, the Mobleys drugstore, I don't really remember them or not, they moved here. And they lived in this little house. And then they decided to build that big house that's there now. So they moved it back over on Myrtle Avenue. May I see I want to see if you are the names on the back. 
your fourth from the left. That mean looking little thing sitting in the middle. That's her. That's not mean. That's cute. I'm just, well, I, Jean Patterson wrote a story about wrote about me, and I told her. I said, you know, I was a meanest young man, and she put them there too. <laughs> Why? How were you mean? Why do you say that? My mother died when I was 11, and I had four men and a colored woman to raise me, and I had to be mean to be up to them. <laughs> That's all I was doing. This old colored woman, her name was the same. She had the first name of mine, Martha, and her last name was Phillips, mm -hmm. so we called her Phillips. And uh, so she never, never would touch me to do anything to me. It was a stool in the kitchen. My kitchen big as the living room. And so she said, now you go in there and sit on that stool till your father comes home at noon. And then he take me to the office. <laughs> but she'd sit me there and I didn't, I couldn't do anything. I just had to sit there. And I said, Philip, please sing to me. Please. All right. Nobody knows what trouble I see. Nobody knows but Jesus. So, How large was the co colored population back then? Not, not what, not too big. We had the two towns right on, Georgeboro and Georgetown. Why were they called that? I don't know how they got the name. They probably named them themselves. More than likely, and uh, in fact, uh, some of the nicest places over in Georgetown, white people did live, and then they moved on in mm -hmm. and Goldsboro has not never amounted to too much but it's it's awful big out there and, and I've heard people uh, some of the blacks in town talk about the quarters what do you know what they meant by that well I guess that's when they were working on the farms mm -hmm. I wouldn't wouldn't really know mm -hmm. well, and now right back of our house at 718 Oak Avenue that full half a block my father owned and he was sell the land. So we didn't let us see. We had a river farm there. But uh, then he had a farm out on the west side of town. What were some of the points of interest around this area that you remember? Shell Mound. That was still the place to go and dig. Yeah, you can go there and have a picnic. <clears throat> and, uh, the, the boat trips were the main thing. Why'd you go on your boat trips? Well, we would either go down the river or up the river. I've been up the river as far as, as the brickyard, but I don't know where the brickyard is now. Uh -huh. But we went up the went down the river because see that river runs right. north. And I've been down. As, we used to have uh, boat parties and have a chaperone, and we go over to Enterprise. One time, a bunch of us went over to Enterprise, and that hotel was still there, the Rock House. I didn't know there was ever one over there. Yeah, where the orphanage is now. Uh -huh. And because see, the boats came to Sanford, then went over there. Oh, I see. The and Brock House? Brock House, uh-huh. There's a chair out of the Brock House right over there. Uh -huh. I did get that way from the Vincent <laughs> boy. <laughs> he didn't want to part with it, but he did. He had a bunch of them. But anyway, we went over there one night and the hotel, we went in the hotel, it, did, it wasn't, didn't have any, it did stay open for a while, but uh, it didn't, the whole bunch of us went in and we registered. And we were Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. I was Mrs. Ralph Stevens, Dr. Stevens. <laughs> And all that, we'd give anything in the world we could find that register now. Yeah. Trouble is, I'm about the only one left. Ah. Uh, <laughs> it really well, is. Well, do, do you reckon the register's probably been destroyed, don't you oh, think? Oh, a long time ago. Yeah. Because I tore it down. How large your hotel was it? It was kind of like the Sanford House was on this side of the river. That big, was pretty large, then, Big wasn't wooden it? building. Mm hmm And there were a lot of tourists over there, too, because hmm. it made a nice trip. And yeah. they have a lovely little Episcopal church over there. Yes, that and, is. Uh, things like that. I love to ride over there. And not too long ago, this boy from Longwood, he said, Miss Fox, I'll get a title for him. <laughs> Miss Fox, w would you ride over to Enterprise with me? I want to go to the cemetery. I said, well, I think I know where the cemetery is, but I'm not quite sure. Because the things, you know, when they build up, you get lost. Right. Right. 
But uh, he was looking for a name that the Mill House here in the South that somebody's trying to do do over, and people by the name of Dickens had built it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we went and we found him in the cemetery, and we walked up. But we took he, he didn't know anything about Enterprise, so we went and saw as much of it. Not yeah. too much more than what was well, always been there. The lake show over there is lovely, it really. Is. That's those the way Sanford should have been on the high side. We're yes. on the low side. Yes. Was Enterprise settled before Sanford was? And now that I couldn't mm -hmm. tell you. No, I don't know anything about that. I know once in a while the different captains on the boats that knew us so well, us children. When we'd hear the boat blow up at the bridge, we'd all sail down there to get on the railroad dock. And they'd let us ride over to, to Sanford Avenue. Oh, we thought we'd have a long trip. Well, wow, would have Every now so. and then, about these different Captain Creasa or Captain Lauren or something. And the conductors knew us. They let us ride and blow the whistle as it backed down to town. Oh, Kids great. don't have no fun. No, no, not that kind anyway. <laughs> but, you all were Mark Twain's. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what about um, the DeBerry Mansion? Was that being used at that time? Oh, yes. I don't know what year Count DeBerry, because he had a riverboat name, too. I don't know what year that mansion was built. I should know something about it. What did I have the other day about it? I don't know. I don't believe I've read anything about it either. And. Uh, I keep giving this boy along with these things, and I, I hunt all over, and I said, how have you got it? Yes, but I'll bring it back someday. <laughs> I really don't want it back, because it's just something for me to look yeah. out for. <laughs> but it's been there a long, long time. I, now my, um, the brother I lived with, years ago, he sold four. Of course, the house had been there long before that. Count, he sold and went over there and had to go through the wild woods to get to the place, to sell them. Model T Ford. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, then the art people took it over, and, and I had a nephew, a niece, and a husband who came up with the son and took art there. And get, he taught art. And I go over that same day that we were over at Enterprise, the how we went. He said, I've never been in. I said, well, let's go see if it's open. I'd pay our way to go in. And, uh, but it was open and you didn't have to pay, but there was a whole lot of, I can't call them elderly because they wouldn't go to me. <laughs> and, uh, but they uh, were doing handiwork, doing things, you know. Oh, I see. When I went through it, you had to pay. No, uh -huh. well, I well, I paid most of the time, but the doors were open and they, I said, no, this is there's something going on. Mm -hmm. Well, the woman we talked to, she didn't know anything to tell this young boy about it. And I told him, well, we'd have to come back sometime. And uh, a care she said there was a caretaker that could tell him everything, but he wasn't there. Well, then the Art Association doesn't have that anymore. No. And it looked like for a while the state was going to tear it down, but thank oh, goodness they didn't. They should. That is the most beautiful place. Yes. I've been all through it, and some of the various things are still there, but they've got the rooms locked off. Mm -hmm. So all we could do was come in the hall and go over to this room on the north. They wouldn't even let us go upstairs. Hmm. Which I didn't blame them for that. No, no, I, I could see where they'd have to do that. Have to protect them. Right. Uh, what was the government, city government like in Sanford back then? Well, now if I just knew where it was, <laughs> I'd give you the... What did I do with that? I have and my father and all of them are on the city government. It's about it I guess they had about the same thing they've got now, but they didn't have as much work to do as that. That's all I could say about that. I think we ran it was run a little more peacefully then. <laughs> but I do I, I really don't know what I've done with those things. They're in the house here someplace. Uh, do you remember any outstanding disasters or anything that happened? Well, the Catholic Church burned down and Bernal's Hardware 
where they kept all those bathtubs and things burned down. That's how we had bathtubs all over town for what, where sulfur wells were, and horses could go there and drink. Oh, really? Yeah. He, they were in the fire sale, or he just gave them? He gave them to them. They weren't good to put them by his house, so he gave them to them wherever there was a sulfur well. With these bathtubs were full of water. <laughs> I still see some out in pastures now. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. I bet the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, what about hurricanes? Um, do you have any bad ones come through? Donna, to my way of thinking, is the worst thing we've ever had. And, uh, that's the most destructive. But we've had them each year, but not recently. It's been some time mm -hmm. since we've got. I guess back then. They mostly uh, bothered the farmers more than anyone else because of the winds yeah. and everything. Um, Edith told me that uh, her father-in-law was given a medal for rescuing some people when a boat named the Iris burned down here. Mm -hmm. Do you recall no, anything about that? that? Mm -hmm. I know, uh, speaking of John Morgan, his mother and I don't know whether Miriam was on that boat or not, but they, something, our lake is very, used to be very treacherous. I think it still is, except they have put canals, deeper canals out there. And the I've always heard it was a shallow lake. Very shallow. Yes, you could walk across, just all you had to do was swim across these canals and go walk on over the Enterprise. I didn't try it, but anyway, <laughs> I've heard of people that did. But anyway, it is, something happened to the boat they were in, and they, it was a very kind of bad, and uh, uh, there's quite a few young people on that. Mm -hmm. But and then the funny part of it is, her sister Ruth, John's aunt Ruth, we graduated from high school together, and we were on this boat ride up to Fort Florida. That's on the other side of the bridge, going up to Beaver. And uh, Mrs. Turner was our chaperone that night. And as we were getting off of the boat, she said, do be careful because the walk is narrow here before you get to the dock for, to go in the warehouse. Well, we were doing real good and all of us something went kapop. And it was Ruth. <laughs> Down in 20 foot of water with filings. Oh, the boys just laid across the dock and right on down, and they kept yelling down into the water, put your hands up when you come up. And she did, and that's the only thing that saved her. And then old Captain Peggenhart had that boat, and he, he happened to have a bathing suit on there, and we found a place and got her clothes off of her and put her in that bathing suit. And she was scared to go home because her people didn't want her to go on account of the other two with the accident that was on the lake. But we thought that you got home all right and explained everything. And well, so she was lucky they found She was her. darn lucky because Ooh. she could have hit her head on one of the right. pilings and that would have been it. Mm. Well, how old was she at that time? Well, let's see, how old was I? We were about the same age because we all graduated together, I guess. We were in our 20s. Uh, do you remember any of the places up the river that uh, I think someone said there was a place they called a plantation, or rather down the river. Down the river would be going this other way. We go up the river to The river runs north. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's right. I don't know where the plantation mm -hmm. is. Uh, do you remember any important people that came to Sanford, or that were considered important at the time? Well, in our old opera house, we had opera singers that came here. The same. Don't ask me what the names were, but I do know that we had more then than we had uh, different. Uh, well, I'm thinking a minute what I want to say. Wait, what? Minstrel was shows. Minstrel. Coburn's minstrel came, and he was the best that was ever Coburn. around. Uh -huh. Coburn. Coburn. He he lived over. His family lived over the town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but we did down in that old opera house. Now, we, where was that? It's where the Ritz Sale is now. It was a big wooden building. And uh, before our schools, 
had any place to graduate from. They had the graduating classes there. And the first graduating class of four girls had theirs there. And that was in 1907. I do know that. Yeah. Mabel Brown was one of uh, them. <laughs> how many schools were in Sanford? We had the, the Little Red School over on Palmetto. Is that the grammar school? No, the grammar school is over here. That was built in 1902. What was the Little Red School? Well, that was all of them went to school there but me. And uh, I went to private school, which is the biggest mistake to get. Well, I just had, I was the only pupil. I took music and lessons every day. And in 1902, when the school, grammar school was built right back of where we lived, I went to school there and I was in three grades in one year. I was getting too much. <laughs> but, what, you said private school, where was that? Well, no, this, this wasn't, I was the only pupil, Miss Emmy Trapper. Oh, I see. She had, she taught music, and I don't know why I was so precious that I couldn't go to school over to the Little Red Schoolhouse. Well, but my brothers were there, yeah. and I had the honor roll of that school, and um, my brother Gwen, who was the oldest of us all, I said, Gwen, you're not on it. No, that's the day I was standing in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else is on it, but he's not. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but anyway, it, I have all those school, a lot of those, some of those school pictures and things. How did you happen to uh, get so many of these things that you you were just interested in it and people gave them to you? Or? Yeah, well, we they gave us a brownie Kodak and we took everything that came to town, you know. We just had a lot of things going for us. I laid some of these out. Let's see, I believe this says uh, pictures of when the days were younger. Uh -huh. And uh, it's a different one that I graduated and went to school with and our boyfriends and what have you. Down on the lakefront and on the different docks. And this is down on the Clyde Line dock steps. Up, not on the docks, but this side of it. And we were given a cat a drink of liquor. Well, now they were steep steps, weren't they? Went down pretty far. Well, the people went up, people lived upstairs in those houses. Mm -hmm. So, uh, was there a lot of building uh, on the lakefront? No, not too much. See, the Sanford House and uh, with its park, and then a, a walk out from that. And then on the corner of, let's see, that was Palmetto Avenue that they came down for the flat line. And uh, there was a little house on the corner there. And then the warehouses on the other side that belonged to what to store the stuff that came in on the boat. Did Sanford send out any products on the boat? Oh yes. What? Uh, Just about everything that could go out, I guess. Everything from the farms. Not too much from the farms, but of course it was a tourist attraction that boat business, really and truly. But they did have certain things from the stores and things that they sent out, and. Uh, what about fishing, did they? We had the regular fish houses. Now that's where if I just had that 1910 thing, I could show you the different fish houses that were down beyond the dock, beyond the boat. Mr. C.R. Walker had a big place, and Mr. Leffler came to build it out there. People, they had a fish house down there. And uh, so, but the produce went out by train. A lot of it, because, had to get that quicker, probably. Well, and, and before the big men came in, mm. we could have what you call the mail order business, mm. like anything else. And you, you could, people could order so many crates of celery. They didn't have to have a whole carload of them. Oh, no kidding. And uh, after the railroad wound up, that's what my father and my brothers were in, and they stayed up there in the Pico building until it was sold as a Galata. And that my father died and the boys went into something else. So anyway, they, uh, most people could order just what they wanted and that's what they packaged and sent to them. And uh, I used to make bags that we ship lines in through the post office to different places. 
Now, where, where, where did they grow the limes that they shipped? Well, they had different groves around here. We have lime trees and things like that. I know they had lime groves. Mm -hmm. And no well, general science got us started in a whole lot of things. So, now there's, there's one of the parties out at the uh, Shell Mound, and that was my Sunday school class, and we had to have, and the teacher had to carry a gun to keep us straight. <laughs> <laughs> Not terrible for me to say that. <laughs> no. <laughs> he must have enjoyed your class, all girls. This is one of our docs. That's from the Sanford House doc. That, you know, when you take pictures, how uh -huh. crazy you are. <laughs> uh -huh. They were long docs, weren't they? Yeah. Now, here's one of the scenes. These are all fading out, but this this was a parade in Sanford down there on First Street. Oh, look at that. Wonder what building that is. Yeah. And this is the Sanford house. Oh, that's a good picture of that. That was large. The two porches, two uh, first and second floor porches. Oh, it was a three story building. Uh huh. It's a shame, too, that they had to tear it down. Yeah, the park was in Who park. ran that? Uh, we Spice. had very many, uh, different people. Mm -hmm. Engelhartz and, and different people. Couldn't keep up with all that. Mm -hmm. And that's something, Some I don't know whether they have any of the registers of that hotel or not. We used to have big dances there in the dining room. It was a great big dining room. This uh, picture of the dock is looking which way? It's going South. across the lake. I was just wondering down at the end of that where my finger is, what that building was. Oh, that's was the hotel back. back there, and this is this oh, is the I other see. end of it. Yeah, that's the hotel back there, and you see, we came through the park. Mm -hmm. What were your parks like? They were pretty. Better than what we got now. Did they have any facilities like tables or anything like that? Or just you probably sat on no, the ground? No, sat on the ground. Uh, down this park across from the churches down here on Park Avenue, the ditch used to run straight through that. They had bridges to go across that, with lattice work on either side of it. Oh. And uh, then they got to where they had the band shell, similar to what they've got now, but it was in the middle of the park. They had sidewalks that ran both ways, across the park this way. And they did have benches and things out there, and, and uh, you could take your lunch and do whatever you wanted to. Uh, they had a band? Yeah, we used to have good music out there. The woman my brother married, her father was a bandmaster. What was his name? Stuman. And uh, that whole family was musical, and, and Robert Herndon married the oldest girl, and Billy Burdick the youngest, and my brother the one in the middle. And my brother had eight children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how often did they play? They had a concert a couple of times a month, something like that. And everybody in town, as Billy Leff will tell you, he's the only one left that was in the band. And really? The truth, and he goes over to see this young, she lives in the land now, the youngest daughter. And uh, her husband died, and her children moved over to the land, so that's why she went. And uh, he goes over, has this Marge that takes care of him, take him over there, and he'll come back. I had the most delightful time. Because Junie is, she still plays the piano, and she is now, let's see, Mrs. Stuman played the bass horn, Mr. Stuman led the band, Jesse played the clarinet. Jody played either the flute or the piccolo, and Jimmy the drums. They were with the circus before they came to Sanford. They were with the circus. I can't tell you the name of it right now. And they Did came, they retire? Or just well, they came to Sanford, and, and uh, they liked it here, and they finally came back. And so they played quite a good bit in our musical thing of Sanford. Um, and the townspeople made up some of the members also in the band? 
Well, they were all down. Oh, down. were they? Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize. My brother was six feet something, and he, the instrument he played was piccolo. He said he could put it in his pocket and walk off. <laughs> this is a salary farm right down here on Park Avenue. My goodness. Ninth Street, corner house. And this is back of it. My father planted it for these. This is Miss Alley and Miss Emma Trafford. Here they are sitting in with a high board fence to the neighbor's house. These were large houses. They're still down there. They're what they call the traffic houses. And they had a lot to do with laying out the town. Mm -hmm. so, who, who did lay out the town, do you know? Mr. Trafford. Trafford? Mm -hmm. The Presbyterian had finally torn down the pretty home that he had down there on the corner of Fourth and Park. Mm -hmm. What's the oldest house in Sanford now, would you guess? I don't know. Grandfather's houses were built long before I came along. They've torn down all the old ones. That's they trouble. have. You're right, it is trouble. They've, tor they've torn down too many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Early had a home down there on uh, Oak Avenue, corner of Fourth, I think that was. No. Yeah. Fourth and Oak. It's just been torn down. And then the house this side of it, the Longs house, a great big house. That wasn't as old as an early house, but it was a good house. And the only one left is the one on the corner now, across from the park, across from what used to be the Colonel Walton Hospital. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Brown built that. And, uh, but uh, these other two, uh, that Williams boy bought them when he tore them down. And nothing but weeds. I've seen them. It's just. And that early house was the one, it wasn't in a sham, all that fanciness up at the top, you know, with the sunken windows and all. That was real. Now they build them, they just put all that other on the outside. And of course it's gotten in a bad fix. Right. Not but up. anyway, they... I, well, the, I thought the big shame was when they tore down that Malum building on first. That well, was an attractive building to Well, me. that was the uh, DuPont building. Was it? And my brother Gwen, who we, and he lives so next year, he's been 99 years old. He, he's the one that I did, a, I've got it someplace, a list of all the old houses in town. But when he was sick for a long time, they lived in Sarasota. And I used to go down there and spend a week with him out of every month. And one day I went to him and I said, now Gwen, I won't talk to you. I said, I don't think you're going to die, but I want to know something. <laughs> he said, all right, what is it? So we started and we named all these old houses, and he knew who built them. Oh, that's good. And so uh, Dr. Wellington built this Dowdney house out here, because I don't know who Dr. Wellington was. And he named over the different ones. And. Um, the early house, even that man was a railroad man, I believe. And, uh, but anyway, I can't remember all of that. That would be and interesting. It would be interesting to map that out to put somewhere. And, uh, yeah. But down uh, at the beginning of Sanford, now we were far out in the country where we were on Hicks Street, because it, everything was downtown. It was all down there where the rich theater, because that was the opera house. And the rest of the block was solid houses. Because my father and mother lived in one of them when they came over from Mobile. And uh, now the, uh, there's a house on the corner of uh, Palmetto and uh, I, I have to think what the streets are, Third Street. It's been all done over, but the original part of that house. I've got the article, I'll give it to you to read it. Was the first railroad station in Sanford, not where it is, but downtown. Really? And it was moved when Mr. Plant came in to build what he wanted to build. It was moved up there in two sections, and they were painted black. 
and there they sat. Now my father told me all this is the reason why I knew it. And uh, then this Mr. E.T. Woodruff came to town after so many years, and he made a lovely home out of it. And the living room to that house is the waiting room of the old hotel, the old depot with the bay windows in his chair. Is that right? And it's still standing? Yeah, it's, it's built. Let me see. I've got there. All That's right. one of the things that Hal was about. Hmm. I just wish somebody would come and get me organized. <laughs> young man, this preacher. That You need to make a scrapbook or something. Oh, I have one and it's worn out. Uh, now that's that's the area dot railroad a hundred years ago. That's the article he wrote about it. Eighteen eighty-four. This says courtesy of Rollins College archives. Was not Rollins College started here in Sanford? No. Wasn't I thought that building down on the corner used to be a bank. Don't they have a plaque down there? Used to have a plaque on the side of it that I thought said something about Rollins being my. I don't know. I don't think so. I, I'm Rollins. probably mistaken then. Well, Mr. Plant was not the first one to come through here with the railroad then. No, I, but don't ask me who it was because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was 1492, I'm afraid. <laughs> but. Uh, this young boy has been writing for the Herald, but he's gotten himself so involved in so many other things uh -huh. now that, uh, oh, I said this, uh, it was the South Florida Railroad and became a branch of the plant system in yeah. 1902. It was absorbed by the Atlantic Coastline. Hmm. Travel time from Sanford to Orlando was nearly two hours, with stops at Orlando, Maitland, Longwood, and Sanford. And flag stops at six other points. What are flag stops? They flag the train because somebody wanted to get on. Oh, they I weren't going to stop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is interesting. So there was a group of area businessmen secured a state charter call for building a line between Lake Monroe and Orlando, but they had a lack of capital until Longwood promoter Edward Hennick, Hennick, H-E-N-C-K, uh -huh. procured financial backing from a New England newspaper. I can tell you something else about him, too, where he's Longwood. Some friends of mine that lived over at Daytona Beach my friend's mother and father, and I met her, we met each other when we were eight years old, not the mother and father, we met two. But all through the years, they lived over there. Well, when she, she, because my friend grew up and got married, and her mother and father died, and she went to the attic of their place, and then brought it all over to her place. And well, then my friend was accidentally killed in an automobile accident. And her daughter, who is my godchild, she lives in Texas now. She went up in her mother's attic to get different things, and she brought me quite a few things. She said, she called me Aunt Martha, and she said, Aunt Martha, perhaps you can help me out on some of these. There was a picture of this man and woman, and the picture was taken in sight of Mr. Ensman's clerk shop that was downtown. And all that building has been torn down. And I said, well, I have any idea who they are. And she said, well, I don't, sure, I don't know. She said, but it was, she called her grand, grandfather Lord Coates and her grandmother Dam. <laughs> the grand. And, but anyway, they, uh, she said, well, see if you, if, if you could put them in the paper over here, maybe somebody would know them. They're such nice looking people. I said, so I called Jean Patterson, she was working on the Herald at that time, and she said, no, they're too far gone to get in, in the newspaper. 
Well, this boy came over from Longwood, and he was 19 years old then. And um, I told him, I said, now, I don't know of these people at all. He said, well, I've seen pictures someplace like this, and I think they belonged in Longwood. And he said, uh, if you say they were taken in Sanford, I said, they either had to go to Orlando or Sanford one to get those pictures made. So they came over to Mr. N's menu. And so he got all the pictures. He traced every line of their faces, their eyes, and it turned out to be them. Is and where this boy lives in Longwood is practically down on the main drag. They got a real, it was a real old house, and they've done it all over, it's just lovely. And just catacombs, and then you have those people here. Oh, and now all this has come up about Mr. Hink. A world, isn't that? Oh, that's now, great. Now, wasn't that something? It was. Now, I was giving the world he could. He was coming in here today, but he and his mom, as I tell you, are going to Kentucky yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. And what's his last name? Uh, Freeman, Al Freeman, and they're the, the loveliest family. You don't oh. find those kind of families anymore. Well, I guess you do too, but I didn't. Just not, not as often. Adop they adopted me, and they've been awfully good to me. And it all started over here at the grammar school when they were having that, the 50th or whatever year it is the school has been built. And uh, they asked me to go over there. And so I went with them, and that's where I really got acquainted with them. And then Hal came over and took a lot of pictures out of that magazine. And mother said, wait, he, you're giving him a Kodak for this. And he said, he can use it. He came and took it out on the porch and made all these pictures. For this. And uh, so ever since then, and uh, his mother said, he'd rather come over here and stay with you than to stay with anybody. I said, well, but now he's studying to be a teacher, and he ha he's out of F at FTU, I still mm -hmm. call it that way. I do, too. <laughs> and so he uh, he taught down here at Lima. He worked for the school, mm -hmm. and so he hopes to get a, he's going to summer school, and he hopes to get a school next time. Oh, that'd be nice. But... I've never seen a family just like them before. They're Have all, they lived here long? They've all been born in Longwood. Is that right? <laughs> I found out more about Longwood than I ever knew, and I found out that more, more of our early people in Sanford moved from Longwood over here. Is that right? The Takashus and this one and that one and the other, and it comes up. It is. Now, I remember Blanche Takash. Well, she was married to both, Bo Takash Carl. She had the, she had the taxi. That's But that, this, the picture of the hotel, that's the Takash is ran them through this. They ran that. See, the train stopped and the people went over there to eat. Oh, here's your picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Colored man stood out there and beat a drum, and the train stayed here long enough for him to go in that was the most beautiful dining room. Is that right? And uh, so uh, that's an article he wrote about all of mm -hmm. that. So, uh, Hal Freeman. Uh, does the General Sanford Library, do they get things out of the paper like this and keep them, put, file them anywhere? I don't like they should. I'm on the board and don't know the first form thing about it. I just go down there and listen to them. I went down last week and there wasn't but five people and I couldn't do it. Oh, really? The trouble is, like, I guess you know Hortense and Cromwell. She and I go together on those things. They keep wanting to put something pertaining to us in the library, and that's General Sanford. And this town needs a place to put us in. Right. We don't belong to that. Mm -hmm. And so much of this stuff is being stored to put one of these rooms for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need a, a, a wing or an addition on for a Sanford, Sanford. Uh, memorial. And that place. building that you said where the, where the uh, Mallums were, mm -hmm. that would have made, because that was a three store, that was the DuPont building. And Oh, my brother Gwen just cried tears when he heard they tore it down. I know that 
I remember the columns up in front yeah, of that. Mm -hmm, up on the porch. And, yes. And the Malins went to the Catholic Church. And we, of course, lived there next door to it, across the street from it. I can see those people walking up to the church. Every I used to know everybody in the Catholic Church. That old Madeline, she lives down the street here now. I said she was the only one I know in Horton from it. <laughs> of all the people. How has Sanford changed the most since you've lived in it? It's gone down the drain as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> this is a, this man was down looking for a piece from Philadelphia or up there someplace. And he came by to see me about old theaters. He took some pictures out of that old book that I had of the theater. Well, now this says where Mr. Pease was, was the old Imperial Opera House. That's not the same one as where the Ritz is, right? No, no. That you had two opera houses? Well, no, this was built after the opera oh, house was torn down. For, for the My Lane, that you, that the Ritz is, used to be the My Lane, uh, Miller and Ed Lane. They had something to do with it. I remember reading this in the paper. Yeah, you yes. saw that. Uh -huh. Well, he came out here to see me, and I, darn him, I haven't heard anything from him, and I'd like to know how he was going back to, to uh, Tampa because he said there were one or two places in Ebo City that people weren't there, and he wanted to go back. And, mm -hmm. and uh, this had one of the old tin ceilings, the pressed yeah. tile mm -hmm. tops that they yeah. had. There was a Mrs. Rogers that came to Santa many years ago, and she put on a lady's minstrel. Hmm. And that was a lovely thing, even if I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, Sadie Williams was living then. She was another one of my schoolmates. And she and I were to sing. I couldn't sing too much, and she couldn't sing at all. <laughs> but we had, a, had to do a little dance, and I couldn't do it because I had on a barred dress. And I went to pick my foot up, and I was about to split the woman's dress all the way up. So I put my foot down, and I just stood up. <laughs> and we wore the most beautiful dress. Dresses and hats with plumes in them. It was a beautiful. And we had, I had the picture of it. And his oldest brother of mine, he got it built enough to have it in Billy, don't know where it is. So I felt awfully bad about that because uh, it, was, it was a nice thing. And right. one of my sister in law, she, and a Mrs. Gonzalez that used to live here in town, who was the funniest thing. And uh, she could just talk and she was funny. So they asked her to be a black face and sing. She would never sing to my children in my life. How do you expect me to sing? Well, she did it. And her song was playing the watermelon on my grave and let the juice soak through. <laughs> she did a beautiful job of it, too. She's so funny anyway, it didn't make no difference. <laughs> so, uh, we took over to the land and went up in some upstairs in some building. Had it over there too. Mm -hmm. Was there uh, much visiting between Sanford and Orlando in those days? We didn't like each other too well. We liked to go to baseball games and tear each other up. But uh, Orlando and Sanford never have gotten along mm -hmm. too well together. I, I guess that know. dates back to when they first started. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we divided the county which is all right, but I, as long as my father came from Orange County, New York, and they changed the county to Southern Oak before he died, so he could say he died in Orange County, Florida, because he came from Florida, Orange County, New York. But anyway, can't have everything all your way. <laughs> uh, you talk about the bridge to over across the river. What kind of bridge was that? Wooden? First, we went on a ferry. Did you? Oh, steam man out here hmm. to go to the tunnel. Uh, what kind of little boats were they? Were they large? It was a, a flat, and the boat pulled us across, or the man pulled us across. Uh -huh. they, then they had lines running from uh -huh. one to the other. And uh, out here where the bridge is now, and where the old steam bridge was. Hmm. So, but the, the the most fun going over to Daytona when I, when I was eight years old. We took the train here, 
We went to Orange City. We took the train there and went to New Smyrna. We took the train from there to the town. <laughs> then we took what they called a hack to get to the beach. Um, really, what was a hack? It was a bus. Oh. <laughs> We called them hacks. Two horses had to pull it because well, it was dirt road. Right. How long did it take you to get over there? All day. <laughs> you had to plan to stay before you came back then? Yeah. Well, my father rented a house over there. This is the two years before my mother died. And this colored woman at Rick kind of raised me. She was with us too. And he rented this big house over there. Other people been signed to them. Mrs. Savage had a boarding house there. And these coats, these special friends of mine, lived on the a cozy cottage right next to us. We had a three-story house. And uh, everybody said, well, Mr. Fox certainly met, must have had a lot of money. He rented it for $100 for six months. <laughs> My gracious. That was a lot of money. Yes, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to leave it, and Miss Savage's lease on her boarding house gave up, so she moved over there and finished it out in, in, in that house. But, no, we took the train, did all that by train to get over there. Talking about boarding houses, did they have any in Sanford for the railroad men or anything like that? Yes, right down here on Oak Avenue and 7th Street, Street, Mrs. Lang. She had a big uh, a boarding house, and all the shop men came over there to eat at her house. And Johnny Parker had a place, too, over on, that's all, the, that's across the railroad tracks down off of First Street. And the Gables. Where was that? Across from the Episcopal Church, that big old house across right yes. across yes. over here. The so, big white house. Right. Mm -hmm. I think they painted yellow now. <laughs> and then there was uh, this house on this side that they call it the Crisis House now for the Episcopal mm -hmm. Church. They bought it. Well, it used to be the McCall House when I McCall, first came. McCall, but that was Mrs. Margarita Martin. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Margarita Martin. Oh. And she had, she ran the hotel at Highland Park in the summertime, Highland, up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And her pine teal would come down here in the winter. Is that right? Very slanky. <laughs> Must have been. <laughs> then the, the old Wilton Hotel, which is now called the Montezuma, mm -hmm. the Wilton Hotel was run by some friends of my mother's. In fact, this house, this may have lived in this house when it was built. Mm -hmm. And uh, but she had it, and then the hotel got the name of Bilo, and I don't know what all, and now it's a monotone. Mm -hmm. So that's a real old hotel. Yes, it would be. Always like the front porch on that. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice, and I think they've kept it up pretty I've, good. I've from never what been I understand. To I haven't been in a long time either. But, uh, I said everything was down there, out where we lived, was all the country to what the West of them were. You know. uh, what kind of organizations were they in town? You talked about your uh, mother being in the temperance organization. Well, well, she, a bunch of the women in town here were in that, and then the different organizations of the churches and things like that. And I, I guess we had lodges in that. Masons and Elks and all those things. I didn't know too much about that till I grew up. <laughs> what about the Ku Klux Klan? Were they active here? They did have a place out here on Mellonville Avenue where the uh, that nursing home is. There was an old a farm out there and an old building out there, and that's where they met. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I think they scared quite a few of the niggers while they were here. I think we needed the again. <laughs> did they hold parades like they did in other places? Or? I don't know about mm -hmm. that. They that probably was, wouldn't let you go. <laughs> they, they were a long way out. And uh, of course the, the school's all out that way now. I mean, they build all those buildings out there. No, uh, Sanford's all right, but it, it, it's changed so completely, and uh, I think a lot of it is my fault that I'm not the kind to get out and get acquainted. So I've been a baptized member of the First Baptist Church for 80 years, really? and I couldn't tell you how many people I know in the church when I used to know everybody. But that's the way life goes now. Well, yes, unfortunately, that's what growth brings. Mm -hmm. 
Um, are there any good changes that you can think of? Well, we've just gotten more modern and a little more expensive and things like that. I really think it was better than the other day. <laughs> you may be right. <laughs> um, if, if, if you uh, knew or could suggest a way for Sanford to go, what would you like to see Sanford become in, say, 25, 50 years from now? Well, I wouldn't know what to say, to tell you the truth, <coughs> because it's changed so in the time I've been here, and I don't know what else they could do, to tell the truth. Stop growing, for one thing. Stop growing, for one thing, but the way, the way things are going in our state now, we don't know what's going to happen. Do you see any hope for the downtown area? No. They've been there, I believe, in tonight's paper. This Hal and Freeman, I had a neighbor that lived next door and he sold his house to the church back here and moved out. He always brought me the paper the next day because I wouldn't subscribe for it. <laughs> Hal felt sorry for me so the boy goes down and I get it. <laughs> so now I have to read it whether I want to or not. But anyway, this thing, which it, it seems now, not to say that it's about my own hometown, but we can do some of the Well, I think you're entitled to. Asinine things to my way of thinking. But then I think a lot of towns do things like that. And I do think Mr. Pellucci is wonderful. He has a beautiful place and he has done things and would do more, but he's torn down things that I don't think should have been torn down. But they didn't ask me about that. Well, that's the trouble. They just don't ask us. <laughs> no, they just don't ask us who really know. <laughs> But anyway, this, uh, now this thing they wanted to close off Magnolia Avenue for one block. Well, I'll go along with Alder Spear and, and uh, Shenholzer to keep it up. Why? Why close it? There's only stores on one side and the other is parking.